Hi, I'm Marvin, and welcome back to another Workflow Wednesday. And on this Workflow Wednesday, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a bone reduction cut using Real Guide. So right now, I have Real Guide open. This is actually a plan that I already have planned out. Um, we already have the four implants that we want, but what we want to show you guys how to do on this one is just how to actually take, for example, the uh, segmentated bone scan or even the jaw scan and how to make a perfect bone cut um, aligned to where your implants are placed. So right now, all we have in here is just the actual CT scan with the implants planned. And what we want to do right now is to segment the bone and be able to make a working model with this bone scan. And what's really cool is that Real Guide is very fast and very automated in doing it to where a lot of it isn't even manual. It's more just you with the click of a button. So what you want to do is on the left side, you'll see all our tools here and you see that one of the options is segmentation. So on the, uh, on the left side, find segmentation and you'll see you can actually segment different uh, things. You can segment a crown, a tooth, or you can even segment just the bone itself. So what we want to do is of course segment the bone. So we're going to go ahead and left click on that. And what you'll see what's prompted up is actually the bone segmentation I had already done for myself. So we're going to get rid of this. I'm going to go ahead and remove it and we're going to go back. So what actually you should be propped up right when you press segmentation on bone, this is the prop that will actually come up. And what you'll see is you have different settings that go for it. So the threshold segmentation, this is kind of like a manual segmentation. If you want to go through and mark the actual bone itself, kind of like where it's highlighted green here, that's kind of it's marked um, with the threshold. So you can go ahead and change that and change the upper threshold and bring it down, bring it up. And then you can go ahead and segment the bone. That's more of a manual thing. Even with the brush mode down here, another manual thing where you can go ahead and mark it yourself. But Real Guide is really good at being able to segment the bone itself. So what we want to do is just go ahead and just do the upper right off the bat. So what you see is you do have two options, maxilla and mandibular. So what we want to do is we want to do the maxilla, the upper. Um, and what you notice too is up top right above that, there is one option that you can actually turn on and off. And that's whether or not you want to include the teeth in your segmentation. Totally up to you. Realistically, when you do the bone cut, the teeth will be taken away. So it's totally up to you how you want to do it. Um, and this is also depending on maybe you want to print out um, an STL object from your printer and uh, of the bone and you want that to have the teeth in it or you don't want it to have the teeth. Totally up to you. It's always going to be based on your workflow and how you're going to be moving forward with these bone reduction cases. So for us, we'll actually do it with the teeth still in place. So we're going to go ahead, uh, go ahead and segment the maxilla. And um, it shouldn't take too long. It should take anywhere from about two to five minutes. Um, depending on how big the scan is, depending on how much data there is on the actual CT scan itself, will probably depend on how long it's going to be uh, taking to actually segment the bone, but it really will be a very fast process. And then, um, of course, again, like I said, if you don't want the teeth included, you just have to unclick right there on the top left above uh, segment maxilla, right under automatic segmentation. Just uh, turn on or off whether or not you want to include the teeth in your segmentation. And then right after that, you should have your segmented bone. As you see, it's highlighted here in green. Of course, if you want to go ahead and change the color of it, you can come right here to your object list, come to the three lines on the right side. You can go ahead and change the color and change it to whatever you want. But then again, like I said, you see the segmented bone right there in the actual CBCT scan that you have. What you want to do now is on the bottom right, go to next, or sorry, bottom left and go to next step. And you'll see that you have different options. You can actually go ahead and start editing um, this jaw scan. So um, whatever you want to do, whether you want to cut the area, we can smooth it. You can remove isolated components. So that means if there's like some floating material anywhere, you can go ahead and get rid of it so you don't have it. Um, the software actually does a really good job of not leaving any uh, material like that. It's really good at, like you can see here, it's really good at actually capturing the bone and making sure that um, you just got the jaw scan. It's not just... Um, you know, a bunch of data because, of course, with CT scans comes a lot of scatter because you can see uh, more uh, dense and less dense areas. So sometimes scatter can be around, but the software is very good at picking it up. So really, realistically, I don't do much with it um, after this step. All I really like to do, because as you can tell, it's a little rugged. Um, it's a, a little bit, you know, not really that fine smooth smoothness, which is totally fine. But what I like to do is I do like to smooth the area. And what's really cool is they do have a tool right here, smooth. I actually put the smooth uh, strength to just two. 
right there in between, uh, you know, uh, 1.9, 1.8, and like 2.2. Um, and I go ahead and press smooth. And as you see, it just smoothed out the area. It realistically might not even be that big of a deal. But again, depending on when you're making an actual bone reduction guide um, and you're making it on this uh, model, for example, the bone usually hopefully isn't going to be that, that, that rigid and everything. Um, it's going to be a little bit smoother. And of course, that happens because this is made off a CT scan. So it just has a little bit more data um, and a little bit more um, distortiveness and everything like that that comes with the CT scan. So like I said, I just smoothed it out just a little bit. I don't get too crazy. Um, you know, because I don't want to alter the actual look of the bone, especially if a bone reduction guide is going to be made on this working model. So, of course, here we have our bone model. And again, you can actually take this now um, because it is an STL object. It's no longer in DICOM format. You can actually take this, export it out of the software and go ahead and print this on your scanner. Um, of course, uh, you may uh, not scanner. I apologize. Your printer. And of course, as you probably noticed, there is a lot of material. So if you were going to print this on a printer, this would take a lot of resin. So this is where maybe you're just doing this just to make a model for a representation of the bone that maybe you want to do like a test surgery or kind of show one of your clients how this actually works. You can uh, how your bone reduction guides work. So what you can actually do is go to the cut area and you can go ahead and start um, taking away uh, any um, extra material that you may not want. Again, like I said, especially if you're going to be printing this out, more um, the bigger this is, the more material you're going to use and also the longer it's going to take the print. So that's always good to know that you can do that. But once we've gone ahead and done that, we're going to go ahead and move forward. All we're going to do is go ahead to the bottom left and press finalize. And now it's obviously asking you, do you want to save the segmentation project? We'll go ahead and press OK. Just save it. If you're going to overwrite a project, that's totally fine. Of course, you can go ahead and press OK. If you don't want to overwrite something, just change the name of it. So now we have our segmented model just like that. So we can even get rid of the CT scan for now and just look at our segmented model. Like I said, for this step, I just want to show you guys how to actually cut the bone. So I already placed implants and already have everything in there. Now what we want to add is actually our bone reduction uh, cut line. So then now you want to go to the sandbox uh, tool right here on the left side at the bottom left, uh, second to last option. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to bring in your bone reduction cut plane. So when you go to sandbox, you'll see that you have an option here that says load object from library. So you're going to go ahead and select that. And you're going to have a uh, bone reduction kind of plane here that we use. So if you don't have this plane, you can actually download it from Real Guide from their website. It's just an STL of a plane and if you want to add it in, you just come right here to the bottom where it says import 3D object and you'll be able to bring it in. So I already have it in here, so all I'm going to do is go ahead and press okay. And as you see, it kind of just places the plane itself just in a random area. It doesn't necessarily align up with your uh, implants, that's what we're gonna do next. But yeah, you just want this plane to come in. And what I usually do too, uh, before moving it as well, is what you wanna do is you're gonna come right here to object placement, second to last option. And what you'll do is you'll come right here to, uh, you'll select on the object that you wanna move and you'll go to custom transform. And this is where you can go ahead and move it up and down. Before even doing that, what I like to do is I like to make it as large as, uh, as I possibly can or at least as large as the scan that I'm going to be editing, just because uh, you'll see in the other steps, but you want to make sure that when you make a cut, you make a cut clean all the way through, and it doesn't leave any pieces of material attached to the object that you're going to be keeping, and any uh, material attached to the object you're going to be subtracting. So once we've gone ahead and we made that wider, we're going to go ahead now, and we're going to align this up with the uh, top of our implants that we want to reduce to. So we'll go ahead and we will end tool and we'll make sure that we have everything here. So yeah, there's our implant. So actually let's go back to um, object placement. So again, select on the plane itself and click custom transform. It's gonna keep moving like that because uh, when it's on normal to surface, you just go ahead and it moves around. Don't worry, just go ahead and move your mouse away from it and go to custom transform and now you can do it manually. And what we wanna do is we wanna make the actual bone model we made transparent. So going to the three lines on the right side on our object list, go to toggle transparency, and you'll see that now we can kind of see through it and we'll be able to find our implants. So as you see, when we're looking at this actually face on or at the bottom left, you'll see a little diagram of this patient's face. You can go ahead and click that and press front view and it'll kind of make sure that you're aligned and centered. And we'll see that the plane is good and straight. So what we want to do is of course align it to these implants. So now using these arrows, we can just left click 
and drag down and we're dragging down in one place so we're not like kind of manually grabbing it and just moving it all over we're actually grabbing the arrows and being able to just move in a direct straight up and down pattern or left and right if we have to so we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to make sure that it is aligned with these implants right at the base in which we want it to be so now again we'll see it's tilted a little forward so we want to with this rotation left click and we can rotate and make it more of a flat plane when it comes to actually making that cut. And we'll go ahead and bring it just a little bit wider up, uh, wider up, sorry, I apologize, a little bit uh, lower down, because what we wanna do is of course, we don't want the bone reduction to be made like past the platform itself. We just wanna leave a little bit, at least one to two millimeters of, uh, of tissue or bone there, just to make sure we're not um, you know, reducing too much. So again, if anything else, if it needs to be rotated a little bit more to make more of a perfect reduction, with these implants, depending on how we have them. Just go ahead just like that. And I can go ahead and look around. You can even get rid of this and make sure that we don't see any material of the implants going through. Looks pretty good. Right now we see that this one is a little bit like right on it. So we'll bring it down just a little bit more. Just like that. Just to have some space with it. And just like that. So again, now looking at this, this is how much is going to be reduced on this. And again, with all cases, it's going to be different. So you might even look at this one and go, well, there's not much bone reduction that needs to be done. But again, it's all different with different cases. So for us, we can even, if we all of a sudden look and go, you know what, I want more to be reduced, we can go back to the implants, start bringing them up more so we can reduce more bone. Okay, so now we're going to show you how to make the cut. So now that we have the plane and everything in place, now what we want to do is make the cut. And again, for many reasons why we do this is for one, for example, sometimes we want to print out these models with the reduction already done for a representation. We would also like to do this for actually the fabrication of the guide, um, especially if you're going to be making things like stackable guides and things like that. You would want the, um, the implant guide itself to actually be made on this surface because, of course, um, that's what's going to happen to the patient's jaw in surgery. All we're really doing with this steps is just to mimic what's going to be happening during surgery. So once we've had that place, we're going to go ahead and go to end tool. We have this all in place. And what we want to do is still in the same sandbox option. We're going to go ahead and go right under process, Boline operations. We're going to go ahead and left click on that. Once you're going ahead and you selected that option, you'll go ahead on the left side and you'll see we have this different uh, setup that pops up. And what this is, is you can go ahead and actually make these changes or make changes to any type of object that you actually have created on Real Guide. So if we had interoral scans brought in, if we brought in any other objects, we can actually on the top, you can actually go through different things that you have as an object already on you have sleeves, supports, everything, just everything you've added throughout the planning process. You can go ahead and edit with this actual step. And it's really cool. It's something that I like to use a lot, but it's great for the actual reduction of the bone. So what we want is the bone uh, segmentation that we made, and we want the bone reduction line we're going to be using to mimic this bone reduction. So again, what we're doing here is we are making a and mimicking a model that's going to, on what's going to happen with the patient at time of surgery. So right now we have this chosen. And what you see is in the middle of both of these options, you have an operation. Right now the operation is set to merge two. That's not what we want to do. We are not trying to merge these two scans and create one. What we're actually trying to do is we're trying to use this reduction line as pretty much a subtraction line. And everything that's under this line is going to be subtracted. It's going to be removed. So that's what we want to do. So we're actually going to change this from merge to to remove intersection with. So again, we're removing the intersection with this reduction line. That's the representation of this line. And again, that's why we took it and we aligned it to our implants on how we want the bone to be reduced. And then, of course, at the, at the bottom, we have two options. Copy the result as a new object. So copying the result as a new object just means that when we do this uh, reduction uh, step, we're not going to get rid of this piece of uh, model that we have here that's one piece with the teeth and everything. This is going to stay, and then the software is going to automatically create a brand new model, but with 
everything, again, under this line taken away. So it's going to be a flat model with no teeth and whatever bone that we reduced gone. And then what you do want to is to automatically remove isolated components. Again, this is why I had you make this reduction line so wide. Because what you want to do is you want it to be so wide that when you make this cut, nothing that this... Uh, reduction line is touching, nothing stays connected because if it stays connected, you won't create a brand new model with a with a reduction. You will just have a cut going through and that one little piece of material that's still keeping it connected, it's just going to keep it as one model but with a, with a cut going through. But we want everything to disappear that's going to be cut. So you want to make sure you have automatically removed isolated components clicked on. Once you've gone ahead and you've done all those steps, you're going to go ahead and click apply. Once you've clicked apply, you'll see that now we have a bone reduction model. So again, this is our representation of the bone reduction itself. And as you see, it was a perfect smooth cut. There's many different ways you can do this. You can actually even use the tools and kind of do it in a manual step. But again, the line doesn't come out as perfect. I do like using this step because we have a perfect reduction line straight to what we planned. And it makes uh, very well for even cutting other things. So for example, if you make another piece and you need it to be cut, you can go ahead and you can switch to the other piece. Maybe it's a surgical guide that you want to create into two pieces and you can go ahead and have now a stackable guide or anything like that. That's something you would do here. You would just select the object that you want to cut with this line. And then you can go ahead and do it. So now all you would end up doing is pressing end tool. And as you see here, we have this jaw scan and we still have our original jaw scan. So now you can actually use the one that is reduced and you can go ahead and like I said, you can print this out. You can have it for representation of the bone reduction. You, uh, maybe the doctor that you're working for wants this kind of model to see a representation of the bone reduction. Or even the software will allow you to make a model out of this where the analog holes, depending on the implants you chose, will actually be um, embedded inside this model. So you can actually buy lab analogs, digital analogs, and put them in, and you'll have a working model that you can use. So there's many, uh, many benefits to actually being able to make this kind of model. Um, and it's, a, it's also very good for the stackable guide steps. You're going to need this model. So it's very good to know how to make this bone reduction guide, uh, bone reduction model, um, especially on real guide because they have very easy steps to go ahead and do it. That's it for another Workflow Wednesday. If you guys have any questions, please comment below and we'll see you on the next one.